In many data analysis pipelines, there comes a point where you have to decide whether you're going to move your analysis to be more sensitive or more specific. Sensitivity and specificity are held in tension because they're inversely related to each other. How do you decide how to balance sensitivity and specificity? Well, that's exactly what we'll talk about in today's episode of Code Club Using R. Hey folks, I'm Pat Schloss, and this is Code Club. In each episode of Code Club, I try to apply principles of reproducible research to data analysis question. Over the past couple of dozen episodes, we've been looking at the sensitivity and specificity of Amplicon sequence variants. Finally, we might be getting towards our answer. In today's episode, we'll look at different threshold definitions for creating Amplicon sequence variants and see what impact those different thresholds have on the sensitivity and specificity of how we define an Amplicon sequence variant. Okay, don't go anywhere. Trust me, even if you don't know what Amplicon sequence variants are or 16S RNA gene sequences, I know you'll get a lot out of today's video. We're going to talk about making receiver operator characteristic curves called a rock curve in R using data that we've been generating over the past few episodes as we've been pursuing the creation of a confusion matrix. Okay, so once we've got our rock curve, well, how do we interpret it? Well, in today's episode, I'll show you a couple different ways that we can look at that plot to balance the sensitivity and specificity of how we define an Amplicon sequence variant. You'll recall that if we, if we set that threshold of how we define an ASV to be too narrow, then we risk splitting one genome into many different Amplicon sequence variants or many different bins. Yet, if we set that threshold too wide, then yeah, well, you know, all the operons, all those 16S genes from one genome coalesce into one ASV, but we also run the risk then of having multiple species cluster together. We called that lumping, whereas defining it too narrowly is splitting. And so we're going to try to do something that's rarely done in taxonomy, which is to try to balance <laughs> lumping and splitting. I'm only kind of joking. All right, let's head over to our terminal and I will go to our project root directory. You'll see that my issue tag here is red because I've already put in a file for our exploratory data analysis, which I will now open um, my R proj in R studio. And if we look in files, uh, exploratory. You know, I wonder why RStudio, when I open it in pro as a project, doesn't put me into my project root directory in my files tab. I find that weird. I wonder if there's a setting I'm missing. If you know of the setting that I'm missing, please tell me down below in the notes. All right. So what we're doing is we're down here on 1221 rockcurve.rmd. And I've already populated with uh, some commentary and overview, a definition of sensitivity or the true positive rate and specificity or the true negative rate. Um, and I've got a series of questions uh, and topics that I want to look at. So we're going to first start out by building that receiver operator characteristic curve, go on to look at the sensitivity and specificity of a 3% difference, which is commonly used to define operational taxonomic units or OTUs. We'll then talk about the threshold that provides the equal balance of sensitivity and specificity. So if I want to have the same sensitivity and the same specificity, what should that threshold be? And then finally, we'll look at the point in our receiver operator characteristic curve that is the closest to a perfect classification, where you have perfect sensitivity of one and perfect specificity of one as well. And what threshold gets us that state where we're closest to a perfect classification. All right, so we are going to start by loading our libraries. And um, I'm going to go ahead in here and put confusion um, data. And this is the data that we've been generating over the past several episodes, which we'll do read TSV. And in there is going to be data processed. Um, let me make sure I've got my path right. Data processed. And then, um, actually, you know what? I want to wrap this in here because that's going to help me with my paths. Data processed and then rndb.eas. Oh, no, rock.tsv. All right. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put in here some call types. Um, and we will do. Um, uh, calls and we'll do dot default equals um, call double and then um, what's the other one we want to do uh, region is going to be call character 
and that's a function as well, so it needs parentheses. And uh, yep, and then we need a closing set of parentheses on our read TSV. And why is it putting it down there? All right, so we'll run that. If we look at confusion data, we now see in our stuff, we've got the iteration column, the region, the threshold, and then the true positive, false positive, true negative, false negative for all permutations of the region and threshold, and then for our 100 iterations. So there are 56 combinations of region and threshold, as well as then a 100 iterations. So we're in good shape. Everything's read in nicely. No warning messages. Um, again, the warning messages usually don't mean anything, but I just don't like seeing warning, warning messages. So what we can think of doing then is we want to generate uh, columns for sensitivity and specificity, and we want to get the average sensitivity and specificity across all those iterations. So I'm going to go ahead um, and add that to my pipeline here. So we will do a mutate, and I will do sensitivity, and that is going to be the true pause plus, uh, I'm sorry, true pause divided by true pause plus uh, false neg. I think I got that formula right. True pause divided by true pause plus false neg. False neg, great. And then we also want um, our specificity, and that is going to be true neg divided by true neg plus uh, false pause. And double check that formula, true neg plus false pause, great. And uh, so again, we can run this and look at confusion, oh, confusion data. And so we see um, we have columns here for sensitivity specificity, and those look good. Um, yeah. And what we now want to do is we want to group by, and we'll do region and threshold, because we want to generate a line for each region, and we want to get the average or median sensitivity specificity for each threshold and region. All right, and then we can do summarize, and I'm going to do sensitivity equals median sensitivity, and then specificity, median specificity. And I'm using the median rather than the mean because I could imagine that if, if it's not normally distributed, if the variation isn't normally distributed, then the mean might give us a slightly wrong perception. Um, one other thing that I want to do, just so I know, um, I'm going to do the sensitivity IQR um, equals IQR uh, sensitivity sensitivity, and I'm going to do specificity IQR. And this is the uh, difference between, say, the sensitivity at the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile. I want to know how wide, um, how, how large is that IQR? Um, the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove my iter column. So I'm going to do select um, region threshold and I don't need the iteration, I don't need the confusion matrix, but I would like the sensitivity, the sends IQR, the specificity and the spec IQR. And I also want to do the groups drop, uh, dot groups equals drop. Give that a shot. It's unhappy with me. Why are you unhappy with me? Oh, because I think this is supposed to be all caps IQR. Uh, sometimes I wonder, <laughs> All right, so now if we look at confusion data, uh, we see that our threshold, uh, region, sensitivity, specificity, uh, these look really small. Um, the IQRs are, are quite tight. Let me do the confusion data and filter on, let's say, threshold uh, greater than 0 0.01. And yeah, these IQR values are really small. So I'm not going to worry about the sensitivity and specificity in, I'm sorry, I'm not, I am going to worry about the sensitivity and specificity. I'm not going to worry about the variation. I think I've got the median. That's good enough. Um, I don't need to worry about plotting the error bars because with an, an interquartile range that small, if I were to make the error bars, you wouldn't even see them because they're basically going to be as large as the thickness on the line. Okay. So let's go ahead oh, and I got to get rid of this from my select. All right. 
So again, we've got confusion data. And you know what? I'm going to rename this to be um, sensitivity, specificity, specificity. I think I spelled that right. All right. And so we've got our region, our threshold, and the sensitivity and specificity. We're in great shape. OK. So the first thing we want to do is to create a receiver operator characteristic curve. And so we will do sensitivity specificity. And we will pipe that to ggplot and our AES to set our aesthetics. We are going to do x. And for a receiver operator characteristic curve, rock curve, the x-axis is actually 1 minus the specificity. And the y is going to be our sensitivity. All right. And I'm going to then do geom line. And actually, I need to add another aesthetic up here. I need to do color equals region. OK, so we'll get a different line for each region. We'll get geom line. I'm going to go ahead and do theme classic. because I really don't like the default ggplot plots. Running this, and we see that uh, we've got our four regions and our receiver operator characteristic curve. And one thing I notice is that for a lot of the work I do in my research, uh, the sensitivity goes from 0 to 1, and the specificity goes from 0 to 1. But this is so crunched in, right? So if I were to do um, chord Cartesian, uh, x lim equals c 0 to 1, uh, y lim equals c 0 to 1, uh, that you'll see that it's so compressed in the upper left corner that you can't even see anything. Um, so I'm going to remove this chord Cartesian line. But that, again, gives you a sense of the full rock curve space by, by blowing it out like that. But I don't think that's super helpful. And so we'll stick with this for now. Um, I think that looks pretty good. So that is a rock curve. Okay. So the next question, then, is what's the sensitivity and specificity for a threshold at 3%? And what we can do is we can, again, take our sensitivity and specificity data and we'll do filter threshold equals equals 0 0.03. And we get what we'd expect, right? And so hopefully this filter function uh, looks familiar by now, uh, that we can set that threshold. And um, we get our thresholds. And we get very good sensitivity and specificity at a 3% level. But where does that fit on this curve? So if you kind of notice there's little bumps in the curve, each of those bumps is a different point. And it's not quite clear where 0 0.03 is. So down here, the left side of each curve is a 0 threshold, and the right side is a 5% or 0 0.05. Um, but where is 0 0.03? So I'm going to define this as uh, a variable 3. And I'm then going to uh, take my rock curve and put that in there. And I'm now going to add points for um, the, the data at a 3% threshold. And to do this, we talked many episodes now ago about how to combine different plot types. And so we can do geom point. And the data is going to come from the data frame 3. And our AES, x is going to be, again, a 1 minus specificity. Uh, y equals 1 uh, is going to be sensitivity and color equals region. We can run that. Three is not found because I don't think I actually ran this. Ah, so it's not happy with me. And why isn't it happy with me? I think that's because this needs to be data equals that. There we go. So I forgot the data equals three. And so you can see the balls on the line that correspond to a 3% OTU definition, right? So here's V19. This green is 3.4, and then V4 and V4.5 are, are further out here. Okay, So that looks good. Um, one thing that's a little bit hard to see on this plot, because it's so smushed in, is uh, the overall shape of the plot. Usually, you know, when you're dealing with kind of a full range of sensitivity and specificities, the, the window is a square going from 0, 1, 0, 1. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to add a geom AB line. And so we can then say intercept. We can basically give uh, the intercept and slope for a line that we want to put on the plot. So my intercept is going to be 1 for the upper left corner. My slope is going to be negative 1 because it's going to be a diagonal 
uh, going down. And I'm going to make my color equal uh, gray. And I'm making this the first geom because I want it in the background. So let's go ahead and run that. And you see that it basically looks flat, right? Um, that that the the this perfect um, line is the balance of sensitivity and specificity, right? Um, and so that's the next question we want to talk about is what are the values on that gray, gray line, right? And so I'm going to copy my code down because we will reuse that. And let's see. So let's do balance. And we want to look at the, the find the threshold where the sensitivity and specificity are as close as we can get them. So before I name that balance, let's do sensitivity, specificity. And I'm going to then do mutate diff. Um, and that's going to be sensitivity. Or I'm going to say absolute value of sensitivity minus specificity. Okay, And so that creates a column for me of the difference. right? So um, way down here, uh, this first point on the red curve for V19, the difference is 0.565. right? And so whereas you come up here, uh, get closer to where that diagonal crosses, then diff goes down. OK. So the next thing I want to do then is to do a um, group by region. And I'm going to do summarize. And we will do um, what? We will do, um, let's do min diff equals min of diff. And what I'd also like to know is what is the threshold and the sensitivity and specificity where we see the min diff? And we can do a trick here, which is to use the which.min function. So we can say threshold equals threshold. and uh, Threshold, and we can use the square brackets, uh, which is a way to get into um, a vector. And I think we talked about a couple episodes ago when we were talking about using for loops and how we could vectorize things and different ways to get access to um, elements in a vector. So I can do which min diff. And we can then copy this uh, logic for our sensitivity and specificity. So sensitivity, specificity, right? And now, and then we'll also do our dot groups equals drop. And so we get our tittle, right? And so we find that the point where we have the best balance of sensitivity and specificity is actually at the far end for V19 and 3.4, so at 5%, whereas for the V4 and V4.5, it's at 4%. Um, something we're going to talk about is that I had kind of front-loaded all the points. So I have a lot of points between 0 and 0 0.01, um, and I don't have much between 0 0.01 and 0 0.05. And now that I look at these results, I'm wondering if I need more points in between 0 and 0 0.5, but also, do I need to go out to 0 0.1, going out to 10%, to get a better shape on my curve here? So, um, but again, this shows that data. And I'm going to call this balance. And instead of 3, I'm going to use balance to now show where those points fall on this curve. And again, they should be, uh, I got to load my thing. They should be pretty close to where this diagonal line crosses. Okay, um, and so again, if we got more points in between here, we'd probably get um, a, a close or points being plotted closer to that line. Um, but again, you can see that, like for V four five, that's this purple is basically right on the line because it's the difference here is is, is very small. Great. Um, something else that I would like to do is to output. Um, each of these data frames, because when I render um, this document, I want it to output balance, and I also want it to output three. So I have the, the table along with the figure. OK, we're marching right along through here. So which threshold provides a sensitivity and specificity closest to perfect classification? So perfect classification is right here. So where sensitivity is 1 and specificity is 1. Right? And so again, remember, we're plotting 1 minus specificity on the x-axis. So 1 minus 1 would be 0. And so we want to know what point is closest, what point on our rock curves is closer to, closest to this position here. And so let's do sensitivity 
specificity, and we will pipe that to create a mutate, where we will then say distance, and we can now calculate the distance between all of our sensitivity specificity points and that one. And so what we'll do is the square root, uh, we'll use like the Pythagorean theorem, right? So we'll square the x and y distances and then take the square root of that. So square root and on the one minus specificity, we will say the difference between us. Um, I need another parentheses. So specificity, specificity um, minus one. Uh, and that is going to be squared plus sensitivity, sensitivity, too many I's, minus one, and that squared, right? And then we're going to take the square root of all that. And so what we see, again, is like down here, uh, it's really far from that point, whereas, you know, as we come up this curve, the distance gets a lot shorter. And so what we're going to do next is the same type of thing that we had done up above, where we found the minimum uh, difference between sensitivity and specificity. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of cheat by copying this down and tacking that onto the end of the pipeline here where I'm looking at the minimum distance. So I'll get rid of this extra tab. And instead of min diff, I'm going to do min distance. And this will be distance. And again, I'm going to replace diff with distance. And that should all be good. And I now see that the point with the minimum distance, um, again, it's not perfect. It's the, down a distance of zero because we don't have perfect classification. But I find actually that V4 and V4.5 give me a threshold of 3%. 3.4 gives me a threshold of 4%. And V1.9, 5%. Um, so again, I find that very interesting. <laughs> um, I, I didn't know really what to expect here. I actually thought it might be more towards the 0 0.01 end of things or perhaps even smaller. But for it to come out at 3% for V4 and V4.5 is, is pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and copy our plot again. All right. And we will call this uh, distance. Great. And I'll go ahead and put my data frame here so it gets outputted when I render the document. And um, instead of balance, I'm going to do distance. And that should be good. And so now we see our balls here indicating the thresholds of the 0 0.03, 4, and 5. Um, this being um, a distance of 5% on the red line. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we see uh, V4, 5, V4 on the left at 0 0.03. And then this is at 4%. And so I think I really would like to go out to maybe 0.1. I don't know that I want to use point 0.1, um, but it helps me to frame uh, the boundaries on my parameters, right? So if I'm picking a parameter that's at the edge, then you kind of wonder, well, what's point 0.06 look like, right? So, but if we see um, that the distance goes up as I go further out, then I'll say, well, 0 0.05 was a good choice. At the same time, I really would like to have points between, say, 0 0.02 and, 0, and say, 0 0.05, right? Like, let's do... 0 0.025, 0 0.035, 0 0.045, so we can get some more uh, definition on our rock curve and kind of get a little bit more of a precise answer as to which threshold gives us the minimum distance or the best balance between sensitivity and specificity. Okay, so the conclusions for now are going to be uh, we need more points going out to 0 0.10. Uh, we need more points um, between um, percent thresholds, so e.g. 0 0.025. Um, but uh, appears appears that larger, let's put that in quotes because it's all relative, <laughs> larger thresholds provide the best balance and overall classification um, of ASVs relative to genomes or species. So we'll save that, and I will now go to um, Adam to open up my make file, and I'm gonna come back down to my exploratory analysis files, and um, I have data forward slash, or no, it's gonna be exploratory, 
exploratory forward slash, what's the name of that thing? 20, 20, uh, 12, 21, hyphen rock curve dot MD. And that's going to be dependent on uh, the R markdown file, um, as well as um, this file, my processed rndb rock.tsv. And I'm now going to borrow this R call. Um, and let's go ahead and make this thing in our command line. Excellent. Look at our status. And again, we can open up our exploratory files. What are the other ones? If I hit tab a few times, I see that there's a 5.1. And so this is um, the plot for um, the, the shortest distance to 0, 1. OK, good. So again, I do get status, and I see the files that have changed. So I'm going to go back to my make file, and I want to go ahead and uh, add some points here, right? So I'm going to do. I guess I had two five. So let's do 035, 045, 05, 055, 06, 065, 07, 75. And then one. Okay. So um, the other thing I know is this line I had in here for secondary, I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And if I come back down, and I'm not going to, so if I do, I'm not going to run make <laughs> again. I'm going to do dash n. One of the beautiful things about make is that I can add targets like I just did by adding values to threshold. And I see all these other files that it now needs to generate. And it has instructions for doing that. I don't have to change any of the code. It'll come back then and combine all those tibble files, which is great. And then it will regenerate that rock curve data. So it's probably going to take more than three hours now to run because I'm adding um, more thresholds to be combined. And then it will regenerate um, that file that I just created. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Um, I've got a variety of meetings that I during the day today that I can set this up, let it run, and it'll fire off in the background, and then I'll come back and show you the results at the end of my day. So as this was running, <laughs> I had a thought, did I actually calculate distances going out to point one? Turns out I didn't. Looking at getdistances.sh, I see my cutoff was 0 0.05. I need to change that to be point 0.1. Um, so I'll save this and re launch <laughs> uh, the whole thing. And again, if I do make exploratory, now because I've updated the distance file, um, that's going to regenerate everything, unfortunately, which is fine. Um, it'll just take a little bit longer. So um, we'll do that. And we'll be back. So I regenerated all those count tibble files that were the dependencies for the individual regions and thresholds. We actually more than doubled, I think, the total number of permutations or combinations that we were generating. It then coalesced all those together into the big uh, count tibble file. And then um, I updated all of the exploratory markdown files. So let's go look at those over here in Atom. And the file that we created yesterday was rock curve RMD. And this is the rendered version of that file. And as we scroll down, uh, we see where the different figures would be inserted, but also the tables. Again, this first table shows the sensitivity and specificity at a 3% threshold. So I wouldn't expect this to change any. Um, and then this was balanced. So looking at the conditions where our sensitivity and specificity were as close to equal as possible. And we see that uh, getting additional resolution uh, with kind of these intermediate thresholds did help us to see like V4, uh, you get the best balance of sensitivity and specificity at 0 0.045, uh, V19 at 6%, 3.4 at 5.5%, and V45 is still at 4%. So that's interesting. Um, confirms what we saw before, but again, gives us a little bit, resol little bit better resolution um, of what we're looking at. This next condition was the distance to perfect classification, you'll recall. And so here we saw that 
uh, the minimum distance to uh, that upper left corner uh, gave us threshold of five and a half percent for V19. You'll remember that was at 0 0.05 before, um, 0 0.045 for 3.5% for, uh, for V4 and 3.5% for V45. So that all looks good. And uh, let me briefly open up uh, the figures that we generated. And so that will be an exploratory 2020, 12, 21 rock curve fi files of that. And I'll put a star. They should open up my figures. Um, and so this is obviously not what I would use for publication. The lines are really thin relative to the size. Um, but you do see that the curve is a little bit more smooth um, for all of these and that they do kind of uh, line up on top of each other. This was um, the next one. Um, yeah, so these all look pretty good. So once I push these up to GitHub, you could go into the GitHub repository for this project and see the exploratory file that we just looked at with those figures embedded. Um, it'll be also useful to help us think about the direction of any paper we might be working on. So I think we're in good shape. I'll go ahead and do a git status. Again, I did um, re-render with make the exploratory phony variable and uh, that went through and generated these other files for like lumping and splitting and threshold to drop NASVs and all these other things. So I will go ahead um, and update these or uh, commit these. So I'll do git add exploratory. I'm gonna put a star to get everything in exploratory as well as data processed, RNDB rock, TSV. Um, I also wanna, yeah, I also wanna add data processed um, RNDB, um, EASV count tibble, uh, that big data file, as well as um, code, uh, get distances, because I you recall that I previously was only getting it to 5%, and this updated it or increased it up to 10%, and then make file. Uh, so it's upset with me, so I'll go ahead and do a git add hyphen F. Uh, it's not happy about that EASV count tibble. And so we see everything is staged and I will do git commit dash M um, to build rock curves and update uh, data uh, closes number issue 37. Finally, after several episodes. And we will then do git checkout master and then git merge issue 37 it's going to bring all that stuff from my branch over into the master branch. Uh, and I'll double check a git status and we will git push. And finally, close out issue 37 of building that receiver operator characteristic curve based on our ASVs as well as our genome or species information. So this is great. I think we've learned a lot about the effect of the threshold on the lumping and splitting of um, ASVs across different species. Um, uh, it is upset with me that I've pushed up a big file. <laughs> um, it, it's overall not that big of a repository, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, I probably shouldn't have done that. Anyway, um, we'll be okay. So anyway, like I was saying, I think we're in good shape. And so um, this is coming out on the Monday of the week of Christmas. I think I'm gonna to try to post something on Wednesday that will give a summary of where we're at to help us think forward into the new year uh, for perhaps the first paper I'm gonna work on for the new year of throwing this all together and trying to tell a story. And I'm gonna do that here on YouTube, uh, sharing my writing process with everybody. I know everyone has their own idiosyncrasies of how they write, and I wanna share with you how I do it and an added layer of doing this all in our markdown. And I think that will be, um, a unique approach and I will also walk us through um, things like how do you pick a journal, um, how do you outline a paper, how do you even submit a paper to a journal, preprints, getting figures together, all that stuff. And so that will probably be the plan for most of January and a little bit of February. So if you want to know when that comes out and perhaps you're taking the holidays off like you should, uh, be sure that you've subscribed to this channel and you've clicked on the bell icon so you know when things are back up and running in the new year. Anyway, so look forward to the next video on Wednesday, summarizing all the results, and then we'll see you in the new year. All right, take care, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.